Hi there, this is Andrea Mari of Drea Renee Knits, and this is I'll knit and spin if I want to. We gather here week after week, and I attempt to answer your incredibly wonderful, thoughtful questions, diving into everything from picking out yarn, to knitting questions, to designing, sometimes sewing, now quite a bit of spinning, and all that fibery goodness in between. So thank you so much for joining me this week. I am wearing the Weekender, AKA my old trusty, and this one is knit up in Brooklyn Tweed's Shelter in their Marled line. I believe this colorway is called Newsprint. And it's just, you know, one of my feel good sweaters. I lately either, ouch, either wear long dresses with a sweater over top or flannels with a sweater over top. And I'm pretty happy about it. So anyways, I am, I've actually got some coffee with me today. I'm having a much needed coffee break. My computer decided to really freak out a little while ago. So now we're just kind of sitting giving each other the side eye. And I'm just gonna pretend that that's not happening. So let's talk about knitting. Question number one. I've been knitting for a very long time and yet am still baffled by the yarn categories. Used to just be worsted and lace. Now there's Aran, DK, bulky, super bulky, fingering. And what the heck is light fingering and sport? Is it a ply thing? Probably a wraps per inch thing, but I just don't get it at all. Also, what are the best combos for substituting? For instance, if I need DK, what yarns can I hold together to get it? Or for Erin, love you to the moon and back. Thank you. And so glad you are getting the winter in Portland you've been wanting. I really am. We had a blizzard last weekend. We got I don't know, somewhere between 10 and 20 inches of snow. It the winds were so intense. It was crazy. I mean, everything was just, my mother would call it a wind shear. Um, lots of snow drifts. So some yards, you could still see the grass. And then over there, it was like almost as tall as my son. So I'm not exactly sure how much snow we got, but it was a lot. And we, the next day, got up bright and early, went sledding. It was so fun. Um, and now we have more snow on the way. So my winter love and heart is feeling pretty happy right now. Uh, but back to the question at hand. So yarn weight. I just think of it as the thickness category of the different yarns. So lace weight is generally going to be 500 yards or more per, I, I want to make this as simple as possible. I feel like if I start throwing out a whole bunch of numbers, that might just make it more confusing. Um, but lace weight, if you think of like a single skein of it, usually a skein is anywhere from 50 to 100 grams are pretty common sizes for a skein of yarn. And so like a hundred gram skein of lace weight would have 500 or more yards typically to that one skein. And it's going to be really fine. And then from there, we typically go up to fingering weight. So fingering weight is usually closer to 400 yards per 100 grams. Again, that can vary a little bit. Now, um, I had a thought and it left so quick. I need to stop looking out the window because I think it's distracting me. What was I going to say about fingering weight? Oh, light fingering. So here's the thing. What gets tricky is I don't know that there's anybody enforcing what yarn companies put on their labels as the weight of the yarn. Like, I don't, I don't know that there's anybody back there like, nope, this isn't like perfectly this weight and there's some wiggle room. Um, so there's some yarns that can kind of be pushed one way or the other, depending on how they are spun, where after they're blocked, they might fluff up a bit and fill in a bit. So basically it's just, it's an imperfect system. And so for me, if I say light fingering in my pattern, the reason I'm saying that is because maybe the skein of yarn I used 
was labeled as fingering weight, but the yarn maker it came from, maybe there's 450 yards per 100 grams instead of the more kind of typical 400 yards. Generally, that means it might be a little bit finer when you look at it compared to your other fingering weight yarns. So when I say late fingering, it's typically because I've noticed that as I'm knitting it, it looks, feels, and acts finer than the standard fingering weight that generally we are all used to. It tends to be a little bit lighter than that. It's edging up on lace, but it's not lace weight. So I think that's where like when I would use a light fingering weight. Um, sport weight, so it basically generally goes lace, fingering, sport, DK, worsted, Aran, bulky or chunky, and super bulky or super chunky. Some people give different definitions to bulky and chunky, but I see them used interchangeably all the time. So I would not make an assumption that one of those means something different than the other. Um, just a little FYI there. So yes, basically it's just how thick the yarn is. One thing that I think is handy is there is the Craft Yarn Council actually has like a guide to yarn weights and it talks about, it, it just gives you a nice landing spot. Um, Y'all are going to have to forgive me. My brain is jumping all over the place, probably because of the coffee, also because of the computer. So I am sorry if I'm a little bit disjointed today. I will try to be as succinct as possible. So I really like their yarn guide because it just gives you that good landing spot where it tells you like, okay, typically for this weight of yarn, you're going to use somewhere in this range of needle size you usually get somewhere around this many stitches per inch or centimeter, etc. And it just, it'll start to help you realize like, oh, okay, so this is maybe for a fingering weight yarn, I'm typically going to use anywhere from like a size one to a size four, depending if I'm knitting socks or a sweater, because socks you want to knit on a smaller needle because you want a denser fabric, you want it to be stronger. Um, whereas a sweater, you might want to knit on a three or a four because you want it to feel really soft, have nice drape, um, and it doesn't, you don't want it to be stiff on your body. So I just think that that's a good spot to kind of start thinking about it. Um, you can also find, so Katrinkles, if you're not familiar with Katrinkles, Ooh, my mouth betrayed me there for a second. Um, they make these fabulous, all kinds of fabulous wood burned knitter and weaver and spinner and crafter accoutrement, if you will. And I just love them. So they have all these different tools. And for instance, they actually have a knit gauge swatch key. And so this has on it all the different weights and about how many stitches per inch, the general knitting size needle. So exactly what I just described from the Craft Yarn Council, you can also find from Katrinkles. Um, so anyways, that's kind of fun. If you just need something that you could like put with your knitting notions, you can remember like, okay, what is this calling for? Um, then you might find that helpful. So the really fun part of this question though, is how can you get to a weight by combining different yarns together. And I love this because I think that this opens up a world of possibilities. And it it's like breathing new life into your stash. When you think about how you can start combining those yarns together, all of a sudden you have an entire painter's palette and you can start mixing colors. It's a great way to fade. So I love holding more than one strand of yarn together with, I said that really weird. I love holding multiple strands of yarn together. That's what I wanted to say. Because it's fun and you can get these really cool fabrics by doing that. So um, I thought actually that I will put this out in my next newsletter. So if you're not signed up for that, in the show notes below this video, you can click show more and it'll drop down. It'll show all the questions and everything from today, plus links like to these cute little Katrinkles handy dandy things. 
Um, and there's also a link to sign up for my newsletter if you're not signed up, which sidebar, I have a new pattern coming out next week and my newsletter is where you get a special little discount code. Okay, but I am going to put this written out in my next newsletter. I should write myself a note. Uh, but basically, general rule of thumb is two strands of lace weight yarn will give you about a fingering weight yarn. Two strands of fingering weight yarn will give you about a DK. Two strands of DK will get you about an Aran weight yarn. And then you don't have to hold two strands of the same weight together. So you could do one strand of lace, such as mohair, plus one fingering weight, and now you have a sport weight. So the possibilities are just endless, but I thought I would try to come up with a cute little, I'll like write that out in the next newsletter so that if you wanna take a little screenshot or save it or print it out or something, you could always put that in your little notions bag too. All right, next question. I'm just gonna take a quick, quick sip of this coffee. Okay. Hi, Andrea, this is a two-ish parter and I'm taking it back to sewing. I've had a few of you be like, what happened to the sewing? And I'm sorry, sewing has kind of fell to the wayside. It is not gone. I have I have my sewing set up. I actually just tidied up my sewing area. I, I, needed, I needed some shelves and things like that in there to um, organize it because I was working in a very cluttered space. So sewing will happen again. I just have been distracted basically is what it comes down to. Work is getting real busy and spinning pretty much takes up all my other time. But I also think that sewing and spinning are very seasonal for me and I tend to kind of do this with them. <laughs> like one starts to take over and then it eases back and the other one takes over. But sewing is not gone. I just haven't done much lately. All right, so the actual question was, I was wondering where you find your patterns and fabrics. Um, so I find my patterns from a lot of indie pattern designers. Uh, a lot of them actually I find on via Instagram, uh, especially during Me Made May, because so many people are posting and I love that you can see people of all different body shapes, sizes, heights, everything. So it's a lot easier to find patterns and be like, oh, that person has a similar body type to mine. I bet I would like that pattern. Um, so that a lot of times is where I end up finding pattern inspiration. And for fabrics, I have, we actually have a great little fabric store here in Portland, Maine that I go to. Otherwise I have ordered online from Fancy Tiger Crafts and U Fibers spelled like the sheep, E-W-E. -E. And I love U Fibers. <laughs> I almost said U Fibers. It's gonna be a long day. Um, you fibers. And because they do the make the look. So they put together these kits, which for me, especially when I was really trying to like up my sewing game, but felt overwhelmed by making sure I had everything I needed. Um, the owner, and sometimes she'll have her staff do it, but they will, or at least model the item but they'll show pictures of a pattern and then you can do get the look and you buy your pattern from whatever designer but then they'll give you like the fabric you need if you need a zipper thread a needle for your sewing machine so i really love that because i feel like i can click a button and know i have everything i need um i think they might even be able to print your pattern for you if you need that service as well i think so um, yeah, and I'm trying to remember the name of the fabric store here that I have gone to so many times and it's literally not in my brain right now. Z Fabrics. Whew! I didn't know if I was... Oh, okay, that's it. Um, and they also have an online shop, so you can check them out too. Okay, and how do you finish your seams? Do you have a serger? And if so, what do you have? So... Yes, I now, I do have a serger. I got it as a Mother's Day gift a few years ago, was intimidated because everyone says they're so hard to thread that I just was 
like, I don't have the brain space to learn how to use this machine right now. So I actually sat in a box for a couple of years. And then finally, when I really got into sewing again this past year, I was like, all right, I gotta learn how to use my serger. And it's a breeze. I'm so happy I finally started using it. And I can sew so much faster being able to finish my seams on there. That being said, you don't need one. You can totally, there are so many lovely ways to finish seams just on your regular sewing machine. So I wouldn't say it's like a must have thing, but it sure is a nice to have thing. And I have the baby lock and I would recommend that because it's self threading. It has this little air puffer and you just like, and it just, and it's, real nice. It's really great. So I think that's also probably why I've had a good experience with it is I have not had to worry. Um, threading it didn't end up being as hard as I feared. So, and thank you so much. Oh, and PS, are you a tight or loose knitter? I think I'm pretty average. When I knit English style, I was very tight. I think, I think I knit a lot tighter. Um, and I definitely am much looser continental than I was as an English knitter, but I think I've kind of fallen in the middle. Um, but I don't know, I guess, how do you gauge that? Especially since I write my own patterns, it's, I'm not comparing my gauge to anyone else's anymore. Um, so I guess I don't really know, but I feel like I am probably in the middle-ish. Okay, next question. Um... Ooh, this is from a knitter in Paris. Hello. Here's my question. How do you determine the weight of a yarn if you have lost the tag? I thought this was such a good question because sometimes we cake up all of our yarn for a project and then we don't end up needing it all. And it ends up in your stash and the you know, ball band disappears and who knows? Who knows what that yarn was? So, or sometimes like one of the things that can be really fun too is going to, let's say, um, like a Goodwill or something like that, a Salvation Army and finding sweaters and a lot of people will unravel them and then repurpose the yarn. So how do you know what weight yarn that is though? So back to here, um, one thing you could do is wraps per inch, but I am going to show you this fabulous wraps per inch tool for spinning, which is also handy even if you aren't a spinner. So here it has these little channels and you can actually lay your yarn in here and with each one it says the different weight of yarn. So you can gauge it by that. You can also then kind of test that by doing your wraps per inch. You just wrap it around here and you count how many wraps you have in there and it'll tell you next to the name of the weight it tells you about how many wraps you should have per weight of yarn now this is definitely an imperfect science because of, it depends on how hard you pull on your yarn as you're wrapping it around so you don't want to do it tight you really want to kind of keep it comfortably loose you don't want it to be super loose so there's kind of a sweet spot but i think between laying it in one of those little grooves and doing your wraps per inch that you're gonna get a pretty good idea of where that yarn is falling so that you can figure out approximately what weight it is. And you can do the wraps per inch without a tool. You could just wrap it around, like if you have a bigger knitting needle, you could roll it around the knitting needle and measure an inch and count it that way. So you don't have to have like a specific tool for it. But um, I, I have this for, my spinning and then I actually um, have like sock sizes in here which are great and she has ones for like where the directions for Kitchener stitch or brioche or things like that like if you're ever like I forgot how to do Kitchener stitch every single time and I have to look it up you can just get one of these and put it in your little notions bag so I will link to Katrinkle's shop below all right I don't have a local yarn store nearby and I struggle with understanding how a certain yarn will knit up and hold up over time. 
I work outside for my job and love to knit sweaters to keep me warm at work, but I'm pretty hard on them as a result. I want to make sure that they can stand up to that wear over time. I tend to gravita gravitate towards woolly wools and have a couple of brands that I love, but I want to branch out and try something new. I'm always nervous about choosing something that will wear out quick or be too delicate for my needs. What qualities should I look for when trying to find those hard wearing yarns? Is it ply, type of wool, worsted or woolen spin, a mix of it all? A mix of it all. So, it's great that you already love woolly wools because in my experience, those woolly wool, woolly wools are going to be the ones that are going to hold up the best. Um, so things that give strength to a yarn are generally staple length of a fiber. So the longer the individual fiber length is before it's spun into yarn, that will help determine how strong that yarn is. So something that has cashmere, cashmere is short staple length. And so cashmere yarns, I have yet to see one that doesn't pill. Um, and whereas something like a Coriadale, that tends to have like a medium staple length and I think would hold up a lot better than let's say cashmere. Um, that being said, you there's there's whole books written on that and I don't know how breed specific you want to get with your yarns. So I think the easier thing to determine, especially if you are um, purchasing yarn, even I think even if you are at a yarn shop or online, um, I think I would decide so you want it to be hard wearing but you also want it to be warm and that is where you're going to have two worlds collide a little bit so worsted spun yarn is going to be stronger than woolen spun yarn a worsted spun yarn um, generally is going to have more twist and the air has been removed out of it so it's not as warm as a woolen spun yarn, which is gonna have a much softer twist to it and it's gonna have air trapped within there, making it incredibly warm. So for instance, I actually have a great example. I knit my husband two sweaters in the past year or so. And the first sweater I did a, I used a woolen spun yarn. Now, one thing I did not take into account was my gauge had loosened up when I knit the sweater. So there was one of my own designs. I have a version that I wear all the time and it is going strong. It pills, but it has, there's no holes. I wear it as a jacket. Like it's, it is still holding up. He kind of loved that sweater to death and it just fell apart. I think it lasted him two months and given he was even sleeping in it. Sometimes it gets cold here, <laughs> and, but like his elbows are, I mean, it's literally shredded falling apart. So one issue with that was the gauge at which I knit. So that's something to take into consideration. You might want to use a tighter gauge when you're knitting, when you want it to be more hard wearing for you, um, knit a closer fabric. But um, that can be the trade-off with a woolen spun yarn. It's going to be heaps warmer than a worsted spun, but it's probably not going to last as long. Um, but again, Keep in mind that you could go woolen spun and just knit it at a tighter gauge and it will at least help a bit to give it more strength. That way you kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, now, the next sweater I knit him, I used worsted spun yarns and it's holding up like a champ. Um, given he's not sleeping in this one, that might help too. <laughs> um, but it's not as warm. And he has said that he's like, this one's not as warm as my other one. I'm like, okay. So I wouldn't say that I wouldn't now use the same yarn I used in the first sweater that I knit him that was wool and spun. I think now I just really need to watch my gauge and knit it up tighter for him so that it's longer lasting. Um, so I think that is what I would think about for sure is the spin. And you can even tell... Um, Again, you said you don't have a local yarn store. So that can be, a, so if you, when you are in a local yarn store, you can kind of like do a gentle tug on yarns and you can kind of just test lightly. I'm not saying you should go into yarn, yarn stores and start breaking their yarns, but you can even just tell by doing a gentle tug 
if it feels like you can break it with your hands or if you're like, no way. I mean, I have yarns in my stash that it doesn't matter how hard I pull on them. I can't break them. It feels like it's going to cut my skin before I'm going to be able to break it. So um, that might be a good option um, is some of those. So lots of plies too. So the more plies a yarn has, generally the stronger it is. So doing applied yarn, definitely stay away from doing a singles yarn um, because that will be too soft and will probably um, kind of fall apart on you if you're using it for hard wearing. But I love that you work outside and that you wear your sweaters to keep you warm because I very much believe like, yes, sometimes when we make things, we kind of make them very precious and we don't want them to get ruined, but also we're making them to use them, right? So for instance, like my cookbooks, I really, really love cookbooks. I like cooking. I was, you know, I used to be in that world before I switched over to knitting. And I, if you look through my cookbooks, they are splattered. They have writing all over them and I'm, I use them. And I don't mind that because I, I use them. So I think it's great that you're out there and you're using your sweaters. And I think, you know, a lot of it will come with um experimentation as well that like oh okay that yarn held up well and that one not so much so i hope that helps all right um i know i have to embrace and do more swatching but i find i still have two gauges one when starting a project tight and the other as i get past the fussy beginning and into the groove of the project relaxed and looser i'm a continental knitter is that normal what are your tips and tricks for this thank you uh, it's totally normal. So generally speaking, even within a project, even just depending, like for me, I'm always listening to books while I knit. And depending on what's happening in that book, I might start to like tighten up my hands or speed up a little bit or relax and kind of loosen up. So that is just the nature. Our, we're humans and our bodies are going to kind of go through that. Um, but I think my first thought with this question is knit a bigger swatch. <laughs> um, or just take note, because it's interesting because you kind of have two separate things going on here. Because you, um, you say when starting a project and the other as I get past the fussy beginning. So generally when we are learning something new in knitting or doing something that makes us a little nervous or that we just find a little bit challenging, we will tighten up our grip on that yarn and kind of, you know, we tend to do this and that is going to affect your gauge. I think what I would do, I guess I have some questions for you. Is it noticeable enough that it is affecting the quality of your finished project? If it's not, don't worry about it. It's fine. There will always be nuances in our knitting because we're humans. And a lot of that is A, completely not noticeable to anybody but us. And blocking is pretty magical and can smooth out some of that. Um, but if you feel like it is enough to where it's causing an issue in your projects, I would then consider possibly changing needle size to keep your gauge more consistent. Um, or, you know, taking a step back and looking at your project, even getting out your gauge ruler. So you can even measure your swatch before you block it and after. That way you have a good idea of the gauge that you had when you were swatching and you can, um, before it was blocked, and then while your project is in progress, you can check and just see, okay, have I started to loosen up? And if you have, you know, you either need to rein that in or switch your tool to make your gauge work for you. Um, so that that is probably what I would do. I would either not worry about it or I would start measuring your gauge as you knit so that you can make sure that you haven't all of a sudden loosened up to the point where it's gonna affect your project. And our last question for today, I'm starting a top down sweater and they ask for a swatch done in the round. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on doing a swatch in the round. Does it really make that much of a difference? Round or flat swatch? Yes, it does. It can make a huge difference. Guess how I know. 
So I was knitting a sweater years ago. I mean, five years ago, probably, maybe longer, maybe seven. And I thankfully started with the sleeves, but the difference in gauge between my swatch and my project meant that the finished sweater would have been like, what was it? I think like six inches smaller than I thought, <laughs> than, than my gauge swatch had told me. So generally speaking, all the knitters I've met knit tighter in the round than they do flat. And that's actually just mechanics. When we knit versus when we purl, knit stitches use less yarn than purl stitches. So think about when you're knitting flat, if it's stuck in that stitch, you're knitting a row, purling a row, knitting a row, purling a row. But when you're knitting in the round, you're just knitting. So you're gonna use up a little bit less yarn, your gauge is gonna be tighter than when you have to purl every other row. So, yeah, I would highly recommend swatching in the round because otherwise your gauge is not accurate and you won't be able to trust it. <laughs> and I'm a worrier and I don't like to worry. So I do think that you should always swatch how the directions tell you to swatch. Um, otherwise you just don't know if you'll, if the outcome will be what you want it to be. All right. So we are just like a week into the spin it to knit it knit along and there's a video here a couple back if you want to check it out if you had missed information on that. We are spinning up some yarn to knit a pair of the DRK Everyday socks. I've got my first two bobbins done. I've started on my third. I haven't had a ton of spinning time this week but I am really excited to get that third bobbin done. I can't wait to ply my yarn, um, but we do have the knit alongs going for almost two months. So it's a nice relaxed pace. We can fit it into our busy schedules if your schedule is busy. And on top of that, I just finished plying up my last bobbin for this marled spin I'm working on, which I've shown a few times here. So this is Targi, I believe, should get out my notes, <laughs> um, dyed by my friend Casey who owns Port Fiber and these two colors and they were hanging next to each other and I was like, oh my gosh, I love those both so much. So I decided to marl them together and this is my fourth skein. You can actually see I had more of the darker color so that's why you see that on the bobbin um, I'm just gonna make a little mini skein out of that but yeah I and I did decide so if you have been with us for a few episodes one of my skeins is the first one I plied I underplied it and my next three are definitely plied a little tighter and I think I prefer those so I think I am gonna attempt to run that first skein through my wheel again and tighten up those patches. The way that I spun this was I made roll eggs out of the fiber on my blending board and then I spun those long draw. And so there's, it's super, it's very, very squishy and delightful. Um, but also I can tell on the one that I underspun, there's a fragility there that I think I think it would be wise of me to try and reply it. Um, and I just think it'll be good to try, you know, it's fun to try new things. So wish me luck there. And I have some ideas brewing for what I wanna do with this yarn. I think my yardage is actually gonna be a little more than I thought I would get out of it because I only had two braids of each color. Um, but I think the yardage might not be too shabby on it. So depending on what I can get out of it, it's either gonna be a vest or a cardi. So we'll see what happens. Only time will tell. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will leave all the information below for the knit along. It's not too late to join. And I have a new sweater pattern coming out on Tuesday. And the DRK March to May knit along is just around the corner. I think this has turned into my biggest knit along of the year. We 
usually go for about three months. And last year I had so many requests for shawl, a shawl knit along in the same style that we ended up just making two for them. So there will be one for sweaters, one for shawls. Um, so stay tuned for that because I am getting that all organized right now and it's so much fun. But I think that's it. Oh, one last thing to share with you. So I decided to just do, I had one ounce of practice fiber, I will call it. It was like a little one ounce thing of fiber from Sweet Georgia. Oh, I wish I could remember what the fiber was. Faber? Faber. Fiber. It was such an interesting blend and it's like it wanted to be spun. It was the, so easy to draft. Mm. Couldn't tell you because I didn't take any notes because I was like, I'm just going to practice. And I actually drafted way thicker than I ever do. I was letting so much more fiber into there and it was so much fun and I love how it turned out. It totally made me be like, okay, I am going to try for a two ply like DK or worsted weight. And I am, I'm excited to try that and to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone. So I would love to hear if you are currently embarking on any adventures, whether it be with your knitting or your spinning or your sewing, um, that's kind of pushing you outside of your comfort zone, but it's making you feel excited to try something new. I would love to hear about it below in the comments. And I think that's it for now. As always, you can also find a link at the very bottom of the notes with a link to enter your own question. And thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you hopefully back here next week. Bye.